Hello, everyone. So we've been working fairly steadily on trying to improve the data ecosystem for scientists, but we, we end up getting involved in various types of aspects of how our organization works and what would we really be doing. So NCBI recently went through a, a lengthy, uh, how would you say, uh, uh, reorganization and a couple years ago, and we've, I think, for the most part, completed it, but now our, our mother organization, National Library of Medicine, is also going through various sets of reorgs. But the really nice thing for, for PubChem and chemistry is that we're now on the same level as clinical trial information, uh, PubMed data, PMC, uh, sequence, genetic variation, and whatnot, which makes it very good for us to be able to work with our counterparts and integrate the content that's there. We also have been going through this rather um, lengthy aspect of trying to understand what are our offerings within our portfolio of products and how we can otherwise translate this into value for our customers. And so if you haven't already done this, I'm sure that you will uh, soon. The nice thing, again, for us is that you know, we've gotten to a point where we are at even par with the major offerings that we have at the National Library of Medicine. So if you haven't heard about PubChem, the resource which I, I manage, we, it's a rather large resource, about 700 different data sources merged together with chemical information as the primary core. And we're, we're mostly concerned about pulling together anything describing the biological effects when it comes to chemistry. We've, since the last biohackathon, I've been at the last five uh, so far, and, you know, we've, we've been trying to uh, come up with a, a new technology stack within the uh, aspects of how our, our services work. In the context of this, we have launched a new search engine which has a programmatic interface which we haven't released yet, but we would provide to you soon. Um, and it contains many different collection types. So at NCBI we have the Entree system, which is, as you understand, is not RDF aware and is very siloed in how it works. And so what we've been trying to do is to break down how search systems work uh, to provide a unified interface for our customers. The neat thing for you is that if you're interested in proteins or genes and you want to find what biological data that we have, you can use that entity directly and come in with that into uh, PubChem. But the neat thing there also is that we're also aware of much of the literature that exists, uh, including content that's in Crossref, uh, patents and, and so on, uh, with the disease space coming soon. So we've been improving the fairness of the data that we have within our collection, and we do this in, in multiple ways. We use machine-readable identifiers. We use, uh, uh, we collect additional metadata about the resources that we have, and we try to make sure that you know exactly where all the data comes from. The other aspect is that we're starting to collect the license information so that you can find out, uh, can I actually use this particular data set uh, within the context of my resource? But we've also been doing a, a fair bit of efforts to improve standards so that when people transfer data, uh, it takes some of the guesswork out of it. Uh, you'd be perhaps surprised, but when people transfer data, just taking it from one data system and loading it into another, it's amazing how much data corruption happens to curated content. And what we've been trying to do is to ensure that this doesn't happen, to somehow lock down the information and make sure that we have appropriate uh, methodologies uh, um, in place so that uh, this can happen. But we've also been a fair bit uh, focused on, we have lots of data, we have lots of links, but where's the evidence? You know, you're, you're making this assertion, it came from this particular resource, is there anything to back that up? And so a lot of what we've been doing is um, in that particular direction. So PubChem RDF has existed for uh, a number of years now and it's been sort of in life support for the last, uh, I'd say, two to three years. The primary reason being scalability of information. We had uh, a design limit that we put into place where we wouldn't have more than 100 billion triples. And, um, you know, not too long ago, about uh, six months ago, we were about 160 billion triples. And so what we tried to do is we, we found a way to scale back the information that's there, primarily 
by uh, dumbing down or otherwise reducing the number of similarity relationships that we have within our resource for chemicals. But the neat thing is now that we've, we've scaled this back by about 80 billion triples uh, between chemicals, uh, we can now have lots of space to add lots of additional information within the, uh, the PubChem resource as a whole. So what would we do with these, all this free space we have now to now expand PubChem RDF? Well, we've been working a lot in the clinical trial area. We've integrated multiple clinical trial data sets between clinicaltrial.gov, uh, the EU clinical trial registry, as well as the Japanese clinical trial registry. And we found, much to our dismay, that ontologically speaking, there isn't an ontology that you can use for clinical trial data. There is a clinical trial ontology, but many of you who work with BFO compliant ontologies would probably look at it and be aghast at what you see because it's not very good. And so what we've, as we did a survey and we've been working with various uh, uh, different contributors and, and folks who are uh, knowledgeable in this area, uh, we set up a collaboration between the FDA, NIH, the Fraunhofer Institute, and the University of Michigan to uh, basically come up with a better way to describe these, um, these terms that we need to describe the data uh, so that we can at least take something like you see in this table and provide it in RDF form. We've been also doing a fair bit to expand what PubChem considers. We've been describing uh, so-called biologics. And a biologic is not as in a, a monoclonal antibody as you would think of in terms of a drug. But uh, amino acids, um, nucleic acids, glycans, uh, lipids, and so on, uh, trying to be able to make sure that we can describe them adequately because we have a huge number of chemically modified biopolymers inside PubChem already, even though we have a limit of uh, 1,000 atoms or bonds. But for instance, it's, it's really confusing when nobody seems to understand what is a monomer, what is a biologic monomer, such as a protein or a uh, nucleic acid and, and so on. And so you're coming down to this aspect where communities are talking to figure out, well, what is the common set of monomers that we want to support as a group? So we're working with the symbolic nomenclature for glycans. Um, oftentimes when you work with large biopolymers, you want to have some pictorial way of, of describing this. And so uh, PubChem leads the effort on the NCBI glycans page so that we can provide some additional support for the community in this area. We've been working with standard bodies like um, IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, um, in various areas. We, uh, this is, I don't know if you know or not, this is the International Year of the Periodic Table. And we were surprised that you could not access in a machine uh, accessible way 